In our last video, we demonstrated using the official AI libraries to call into the AI service we created in Azure. We use this capability to build a console application that can tell a user who the MBA greatest of all time is, a hotly debated topic in the sports world. Here's what it looks like when we run it for LeBron James. Now, this is a great start, but it suffers from some accuracy issues. It's got the formula down because we told it what to do, but the data being used seems to be out of date. As AI models are trained on a static set of data, this is normal. Let's build a quick sample to demonstrate this. To do this, we'll be using a framework we created called Zaria.ai. Zaria.ai wraps the AI programming APIs into a style that's clean, straightforward, and consistent with the manner in which c -sharp developers typically code. If you've used Web API in the past, this will be very familiar to you. But before we switch to using it, let's modify our environment to align with the sample. We won't be needing the markdown file just yet, so let's comment it out and just set the AI as a generic AI message. And before switching to Zarya, uh, let's run the program and see how it fares when we ask for real information. And as you can see, our message indicates that it has no ability to get that information as yet. Now, let's see if we can make things a little simpler with Zarya. First thing we need to do is put the namespace in scope. So we're going to be using Zarya.ai.chat. With that in place, next we create an instance to the AI processor. And we're going to be passing that AI endpoint key and deployment name that we previously used. Next, we call initialize on the processor, passing in what will be the system prompt and optionally passing in all the reference libraries that you want the framework to register as having types that can be used by Zarya. And we're just going to move the prompt up there because we have it underneath right now. And with Zarya set up, you won't be needing all the boilerplate code that we previously had, so we can get rid of it. We also won't be needing all that code for making a call to the AI and tracking the responses uh, and putting it into a list, so let's get rid of that. Zarya tracks and maintains conversation context for us. When debugging, this can be annoying as we constantly have to restart the application to restart a conversation. I'll be adding a new control command, clear, that will be used to reset by calling new conversation method on the chat processor. Other than these two, control commands, everything else should be sent to the AI service to process. This is done by calling the process prompt method. And we'll be passing the console input as a single parameter. Now, since the method returns a string, we can simply print the output uh, from the call back to the console. 
And with this all set up, we can run the program again. And as expected, everything remains the same. The AI is unable to provide a response that requires real-time knowledge. This is to be expected given the manner in which AI models are trained. These AI services do have a trick up their sleeves for scenarios such as this. The AI is able to identify the data that it needs and respond back to the program with a request for that data. It's then up to the call-in program to parse that response, use the information provided to gather the required data, add that data to the existing knowledge that the AI has, and finally, ask the question again, now that the knowledge is known to the AI. Zarya simplifies that convoluted code needed to accomplish this into a convention that uses methods decorated with this skill attribute. These methods must be static and have a scale response as the return type. Inside of the scale response constructor, you provide the knowledge that you want incorporated into the general knowledge that the AI knows. In this case, we're going to pass into the AI the time. Last, we decorate the method with a skill attribute. For the skill, the description in the constructor provides information to the AI on what scenario should prompt the AI to call it. In this case, we're saying, call us when you need to know the time. Any assembly that wants to participate in providing data to the AI model must be decorated with an AI plugin attribute at the assembly level. And that's it. We're done. We've officially extended our AI with a real-time capability to provide the current time to its users. Let's see how this works in practice. We'll set a breakpoint, save, and then run. And as you can see, the breakpoint is hit. And when we continue, the time is presented to us. So we now know that it's possible for us to make point in time adjustments to the knowledge of the AI to help address scenarios where the AI would be lacking in the latest bits of information. This helps us with the problem we're having with our GOAT score calculator. Presently, we're relying on the AI doing all our calculations if we offload it to the underlying program by converting it into a skill, it will likely give us more accuracy and visibility slash control, as well as allowing us to scale and control it independent of the underlying AI processing it. Let's get going with that by first shifting the source of our AI's knowledge back to the prompt markdown file. Next, we limit the rules section to just gathering data about a given player. If the data about the GOAT score is requested, we encourage the AI to invoke an external tool. This external tool is what we translate to the skill function we'll be creating for it. The logic remains the same in the method, but is now being hard-coded instead of described to the AI. Some of the points to note here are that any parameter of a skill function must be of type string. So you can see that they're all strings here. And the parameters themselves must be decorated with a parameter attribute, which must also be described to the AI during its declaration. So we're seeing here that each of the parameters have a parameter attribute. Um, and uh, we have to describe to the AI what, the, what it should put in there when it makes a call back to us. We've added a stat score and an award score helper method to evaluate the arguments that are meant to be numerical and calculate the score based on those rules. 
So for the stats, like what was your ranking? This will calculate that, subtract in 21 and whatnot. And for the award score, it'll do the multiplication based on the value provided. So finally, we add our skill attribute and we just describe it as something that needs to be called when we want to know what the GOAT score is. When we now ask for the GOAT score, the AI makes a call into our calculator where we process the data manually. While doing this has helped make the data more deterministic, we're still dealing with issues associated with that data. You can see here that we're now getting a point score of 1 or a points ranking of 1, but a steals ranking of 10 instead of 8. It's actually gone up from 9. So to make this more consistent, let's add another skill for determining the actual ranking of a given player. I'll add this CSV I compiled from ESPN with all-time rankings across the key statistical categories uh, that we're referencing. And you can see here that it has the category as the first column, so column 0, the ranking as the second column, column 1, uh, the name of the player in column 2, and the total that they have in that category in column three. So we'll now start by creating the actual skill function that we're going to be using. To do all this, we'll need to load uh, the data from that CSV file into a list of string arrays. So let's go ahead and let's create a static field that we'll use for that. I think we're missing. There we go. With that done, um, we can load that CSV file and parse it into uh, this ranking structure. So we're basically going to use a standard file read and um, the Zarya API actually has a vast set of helper methods that you can use. One of them is called from CSV. It's in beta right now. And basically it will take a CSV file and it'll load it into a list of string arrays. And now in our skill code, all we need to do is check if the category matches column zero and that the player matches column two and if so, return a knowledge statement uh, from column one to the AI.
And with all this done, we're all set. We can check the GOAT score for some players that are usually in the debate. What is LeBron James's GOAT score? As can be seen here, all the data associated with this is now accurate. We're now getting a steals ranking of 8 and a points ranking of 1 and an assist ranking of 4, which is accurate. We also have built in the automatic conversation context, so I can actually ask additional questions uh, and it will maintain the conversation. Jordan here has a 535. And let's continue with that conversation. Kobe is showing as 320. And finally, let's try Kareem. And here you're getting an error message that's basically saying that, hey, you can't send uh, information anymore. Uh, you're sending too many tokens in or you're, you know, you're sending uh, messages into this platform that are taking a long time. And this is one of the reasons why it's a great idea for core data that you really know how to process for you to actually um, just do it yourself. Do we ask for Kareem again? And we are all set with 590. In this video, you've learned how to use Zarya.ai to hook into and call Azure AI services. We've also showed how to augment the capabilities of your AI with functionality running in code. Tune in next time for more topics on technology. And of course, like and subscribe. Salute.